Uh, I like to tell my students, I don't know everything, but I know more than you do, <laughs> usually, <laughs> about most things in the renewable energy world. I started out uh, with Home Power Magazine and worked for 20 years as an editor and, and writer with what was the real, the center of the renewable energy industry for 30 plus years. Um, I was approached by uh, Wiley Publishers to write Wind Power for Dummies, and I did write that. I was a minor co-writer in another Wind book. And I wrote dozens of articles for Home Power Magazine that are, were most of the solar development on this island I had some hand in. Although I'm really happy to see that it's gone beyond me, that it, it, you know, there are systems that pop up that I had nothing to do with. I'm like, great, <laughs> it's taking hold here. Concurrently with my time at Home Power, I did uh, 20 plus years of teaching, uh, did workshops here on the island and in Costa Rica, I started a program, and I also did teaching and consulting in other Central American countries and in the Caribbean. I taught at various places around the 48 states and in Alaska as well, um, helping people learn about solar, wind, hydro, you know, the renewable energy in general. I had a teacher in the alternative high school in 10th grade who said, you're weirdy and you already know that you want to raise a big family in the country at age 14 or whatever and that's just that's that was just what was in my head and people say oh you're you're not you're, you're not very materialistic and I'm like no I just like different material <laughs> I like wood and, and I like uh, my, my life is not simple it's complicated if you want to live a simple life I can help you learn how to do that and you stay back in my cabin out back and you're going to need to live a simpler life <laughs> and uh, and just being here you'll get some some dose of that but uh, um, uh, I, I grew up in in suburbs of major U.S. cities and I found myself uh, finding woods everywhere I lived <laughs> and spending time in woods and uh, enjoying going up into more remote places and hiking and boating and so for me it was natural to find a place to live that way. When I first moved to this island and worked for some old codgers who'd retired from Boeing, they said, Ian, you should go get a job at Boeing, then you could retire here. And I said, hell no, I want to live here. I want to raise a family in a beautiful place, in a quiet place, in a place that has community um, and not, uh, not live my life wishing I could go camping somewhere else. <laughs> well, and that's, that's where voluntary simplicity does come in, and sometimes it wasn't so voluntary. There just wasn't enough money to be anything but simple. Um, but, I mean, choosing to make your own electricity, choosing to cut your own firewood, choosing to... I've never owned a new car in my life, and I never will. <laughs> I don't have any desire for that. That, that allows me to, to live this way. I do volunteer trail work and for a long, uh, several years worked with Washington Trails and, and I bicycled to the, to the trailheads. And people would say, wow, you, you don't have a car? I said, yeah, if I had a car, I couldn't be here because I'd be at home paying for it. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I live more simply, so I have more choice. I have more freedom to, to volunteer, to help, to, to raise kids, to, you know, enjoy, enjoy other people's kids and grandkids and such. So um, uh, the answer to how, do, what, how did I accomplish it is really, you know, one, one step at a time. I didn't have a grand master plan that it would end up like this. Uh, I bought a piece of land. I didn't think I was going to stay on this island. It was too crowded for me, <laughs> too close to, to city. I wanted to live in, closer to the wilderness, but uh, I found a little spot that gives me some privacy and I became embedded in this community and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, you start with a piece of property and if you don't have much money, you got to start somewhere. You start taking down some trees to make a clearing so you can grow food, so you can make electricity, so you have a place to build a house. And, and then you figure out water and you figure out what to do with waste and you figure out, you know, how to grow some food, how to, how to grow some animals. And, um, and yeah, it's, I, I think too many people spend too much time planning and too little time doing.
One of my favorite uh, TED Talks is Ernesto Sorelli, who says, planning is death. <laughs> he just says, uh, says, you know, go, go do something useful. I, I just think uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to plan everything out and trying to figure everything out. And I get fairly impatient with that because we have enough in front of us to do and I don't need to design your life or the world's life or the country's life. I have enough on my plate to try to make something useful out of my own life. And I think if, uh, if more of us, if I had any plan for other people, it would be go do something you love and contribute to the world and stop trying to manage other people. <laughs> stop trying to make a big plan. Stop trying to figure it all out because that doesn't get anything done. I tell my interns, I love what my last intern said. Ian's happy to talk with you as much as you want, as long as you have a tool in your hand. <laughs> and, um, I, I'm really happy to talk and, and even philosophize and argue about politics, whatever, as long as we're getting something done at the same time. Uh, but uh, uh, I have very little patience for just uh, sitting around thinking how the world should be or, or what I'm gonna do next. I would much rather tell you about what I have done than what I would hope to do, because I might not do it. <laughs> I might not get there. Oh, yeah, well, somebody pretty wise said there are two ways to be wealthy, to have a lot of money or to need a little money, Le need little money. <laughs> so uh, to me, time is wealth. It's like I spent some years of my life where I had seven children inside that house and we needed food and we needed <laughs> transportation and we needed, you know, stuff. And I was out working. Uh, doing stuff that wasn't my first choice of what to do, but my first choice was taking care of the family. Um, and I feel I had, a, I had wealth then in that I had, I was building a family, uh, but finding work that is satisfying, I think is something that's lost on a lot of people. I, I, I really am happy when my past interns and students go on to find fulfilling work instead of just remunerative work. I mean, it, I, I feel blessed that neither of my parents pushed any of me, me or my siblings to be doctors or lawyers or whatever. It was like, find something you love. And, uh, and to me, so satisfying work is wealth. Uh, time, yesterday morning, I took out the trash and then I took a 90 minute walk and watched the sunrise on the beach and came back through the woods. I, that's wealth, I had time to do that. Took some spectacular pictures and videos and shared them with friends and family all over the world. And, um, and then we haven't looked at my, my uh, lumber shed yet, but that's where I keep my physical wealth, a lot of it. It's my, it's my bank of, uh, of value. That's, uh, it, I'm never gonna retire, but if I did, I would retire by selling pieces of that. So I, I feel very blessed that I had parents who were loving and caring and poor that was a good thing because i didn't get spoiled <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get a taste for fast cars or 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 uh, uh yeah or, or a lot of uh, i mean i i had plenty <laughs> I, I lived a middle class uh childhood basically lower middle class maybe we might say but uh, but uh um uh, but I feel very blessed that my parents let me and my seven siblings do things. I've had tools in my hand for at least 55 years, and that's because my dad and my mom both we we both we, we both did things with tools together, and and that set me up to be capable in lots of different areas. Um, and I never got stuck with being angry at my parents. I think a lot of people get stuck there and I've helped more than one intern get over that because <laughs> uh, my attitude about my parents is like, oh my God, you took 25 or 30 years of your life to help these human beings come into the world. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. When I was 17, I left home and of course I had friction with my parents at times, but I never felt like I needed to blame them for anything. I needed to just keep thanking them for giving me a good start. And they were alternative people in their own way. Yeah, they, they were intellectuals um, and they turned me on to, to thought and to books and, and to gardening and to tools and to building and, um, and nature. 
Um, and uh, when I left college early, <laughs> before I finished, thank you very much, um, I was just looking for a quiet place to, to raise a family, and this is where I landed. I went to college with a woman who grew up here, and that's why I stopped here, and uh, um, intending to go farther out, but I found a nice little community in a, in a very gorgeous place. Because I love this natural environment, it, it, it's sweet to, to share with other people who also love this natural environment. If I were a city person, I might feel like a fish out of water here. It's like, let, let me get back to the city. But I feel very comfortable being able to walk in the woods and being able to pull my guitar out and sing without worrying about bothering the neighbors uh, too much. And um, But the parts of it that I spend my time interacting with are, are people trying to help each other, people trying to enjoy each other and encourage each other. And um, I have two different neighbors who garden here because they don't have good gardening spots. And I would, I would take five more <laughs> people who want to just come and use the resource we have, which is good soil and water and, uh, and company and, and help and advice. And it to me is too much to, to grab onto and say, this is mine, it is mine. But uh, I love sharing it. I love other people contributing and I love other people enjoying it. What, six years ago I bought a sawmill. I bought it for my own use, but I mill for other people as well. And, and I, love, uh, I love turning around things into flat things and finding out, out what's inside that magic log. Uh, I've always loved working with wood. Uh, it's, it's fun to take it from start to finish, from the log to the, to the finished piece. I had an intern that it was, it was his stepping stone. He, he wanted to get into this industry and he came here for three months. I, I loved when I first interviewed him that he said, well, you know, I'm gonna have to go home Wednesday night because I got a shop for grandma. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I like this guy. And he was the most energetic intern I've ever had. He helped me build the sun deck. We put up a wind generator, we put up that solar array, we put up that solar array, we put up that solar array. Uh, and he went on to, uh, with my recommendation and support, he went on to work for the largest solar company in the state. He supervised the installation of the largest, at the time, installation in the state on the, on the IKEA building down in South Center. And then he went on to start his own solar company. Now he's got you know, 10 or 15 employees and I sell for him. <laughs> Yeah, you want to be trained to live off grid? Oh yeah, come here, because I've got examples and stories and friends on the island who live off grid too, and, and clients who I've helped to live off grid. We, we share what we love and help people learn how to do things, and they go on to do things. And it's, it's super satisfying for me with my own children, uh, with, with my past interns, my past students that uh, um, I would say I need high energy people who want to learn through working. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to talk as long as you have a tool in your hand, as long as we're getting something done. Um, but, uh, and uh, I need relatively low ego people because I've got enough already. <laughs> and, and I need people who are, have a light spirit. This is, this is not a paid internship. You're trading work for an amazing learning experience. You're, uh, and, and I'm taking a huge amount of my time with interns to help you learn so you, you don't get hurt, so you don't damage things, and so that you actually have a positive learning experience. Uh, uh, it needs to work for both of us. Uh, I, I don't have interns to make money because there's no money in that. I have interns to get help here because I've taken on a huge project that's more than one person can deal with, and it is overwhelming at times. And and interns bring muscle and time, but they also bring inspiration. So yeah, I want people who want to learn by working, learn by doing. Um, the people who leave here with the most uh, progress in, in their, with, to their goals are the people that put the most into it, that's, that said, hey, what else can I do around here? I, I need folks who, who understand this is a valuable educational experience, and, and obviously it's contributing here. It needs to, or it doesn't work. <laughs> I, I, I have a long list, about five pages, of potential things that could be done on this homestead. Things that need to be done, uh, maintenance, things that we could do. I, I think life is about inspiration. I think it's unfortunate that too many people get into jobs for other reasons, for money, 
for pressure from parents or others for security instead of saying what what inspires me and that's I, I tell potential interns that I want you to be pretty happy most of the time and, and not in agony very much at all. <laughs> there are going to be times where there's physical work. There are going to be times where you don't love the job you're doing or it's frustrating because you're learning something that you're not good at yet. Um, and there's, there's just plain old grunt work here too. Absolutely interns have input in, in what we do. Uh, but if somebody says I don't like wheelbarrows, uh, I don't know. So if you're interested in an internship with me, send me an email, e ian at renewablereality.net. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your life and your interests and why you think you'd like to be an intern here. And we'll start an email correspondence and we'll move on to a, uh, an interview uh, on, on uh, face, FaceTime or Zoom and, and then I'll need references and, and we'll see if it's a good fit and come up with an agreement.